in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's lift up our hands and bless his name. Jesus, we bless you. Jesus, we lift up your name. Jesus, we lift up your name. Jesus, we lift up your name. Lift up your hands and worship him. Jesus, we Worship him, lift your hands, Koinonia, let's honor the king. Jesus, we lift up your name. We lift up your name. Baby, I you be God.
Father, we are not ungrateful people. We thank you because the desires of our enemies did not come upon us. We thank you for preservation. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your faithfulness. Lord, we thank you. You are dependable. You are reliable. Waymaker, miracle walker, your testimony to him. Hallelujah. Father, people call this year many names. But the name you gave us, you demonstrated that it was so. We thank you. We thank you. For us as a family, we have seen your hand, we have seen your majesty. You have multiplied us, you have increased us. Thank you for your grace. That is who you are. 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 Lord, you crown our year with goodness and we thank you we thank you for those of you who what we are doing seems strange this is the secret behind the finger of God Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and said rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from God for no man can do these things except God be with him there is no level of intellect there is no level of wisdom there is no level of human science that is capable to do this father we are not ashamed be glorified be glorified joshua selman is nothing without your wisdom absolutely 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 thank you for your grace thank you for your word thank you because you are true dependable reliable faithful we return thanks we return thanks for sparing our lives for triumphing over death over sickness and infirmity for turning the lives of people around thank you thank you for transforming millions around the world thank you for giving our teachings wings to move beyond the limitations of time thank you for the prevailing power of your word for access to the mysteries of the kingdom thank you for the anointing of the holy ghost thank you for wealth and prosperity thank you for the effectual walking of your grace thank you jesus 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 hallelujah you see our our generation is a very arrogant generation we are very embarrassed whenever the spotlight leaves us 
whether it is to God or to any other person, we frown at it. There is such a crave in our generation for power, for honor, for recognition. So when times come like this, when we all become ushers to bow before the king, sometimes because of our little achievements here and there, we pride ourselves into believing that it was a product of our wisdom. But every wise man who knows God knows how weak a man is. When you see God's result, separate the man from the result. This is the finger of God. This is the finger of God. This is the finger of God. 45 nations of the world, this is the finger of God. Light in the darkness, that is who you are. Jesus, thank you. When you speak, it is within your power to make it happen. Forgive us for our unbelief. Forgive us for thinking you are a man, you are God, the creator of the ends of the earth. I told you people to rehearse this song. Creator of the universe, what can you do? What can you do, Jesus? The name above every other name. you tonight believers whatever God tells you he can do it believe me believe me don't mind what you see when he's speaking to you just take your eyes away and with childlike foolishness say Lord I believe 
if God tells you I am lifting you on the wings of eagles say Lord I believe don't ask and say who is my uncle uh -uh. I believe I believe this ministry is a testimony of what God can do when he finds men who can dare to believe him Jesus we give you the praise in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah praise the Lord let's honor our worship team come on absolutely amen praise the lord look guys i am so proud of you you do not imagine i was talking to a jimmy and said look very soon we're going to start our own record label yeah absolutely we'll make it happen and by the spirit of god it will bless the nations of the world and you have the opportunity to go around the nations of the world and be a blessing to the body in the name of Jesus. Let's honor them one more time. Thank you. Manasseh is with us today. Bless him. The bishop is around. Hallelujah. Bless you, sir. Thank you so much. I want to welcome everyone. We'll be very brief tonight. We're going to pray. I want to start tonight um, I'm going to give us a very strong admonition which also doubles as an instruction so please be ready to write the Lord put this in my heart to share with us it's been a wonderful year and God has been faithful but let me remind you that the year is not over like Bishop David Oyedepo will say he made the heavens and the earth in seven days I don't care whether it's prophetic seven days or real seven days my faith can agree on the one I want God to move on praise the Lord whether it's a thousand years seven days I know that even if it is in one day he says as soon as Zion travails she shall put forth a child he said have you ever heard this proverb that a woman will give birth in one day be pregnant in one day and give birth in one day that's God for you Hallelujah. I still believe that the best of the year for me is still to come. I truly believe. God has done things that has brought tears out of my eyes, but I believe for myself that between now and December 31st, I am yet to see the hand of God. And so, but I want to encourage us, even as we begin to set the pace for 2018, if you will be there, you can write. <laughs> no, gone are the days where people in, in a false show of humility, they say, we don't know whether we can see tomorrow is a lie. Don't, don't let any man um, bring that nonsense around your table. No, you can believe. There are scriptures that authenticate the quality of your life, the longevity of your life. And the problem is that we come from environments that sociologically condition us to defeat. Thank you, Jesus. I want to give you a few things that the Lord put in my heart to encourage us. Really, this is, this is what I'm here to do this night. And then a few other things that God will grant us grace to do. Now, most believers are not taught the relevance of a retreat. Most Christians are not taught that a retreat is part and parcel of the spiritual growth process of a believer. We teach fasting, we teach prayer, but very few believers have been taught as a corporate doctrine not just a time out away from people but a retreat that you end and begin seasons in your life in the presence of god it is risky to end and begin seasons in your life in the flesh the most spiritual aspect of your life should be when seasons are ending and when seasons are beginning because that's when satan gets at people when the when when the seasons have been cleared up and you're moving it's difficult for satan to derail you are we together now so it is very very important every one of us must make sure that we use this one month that we're having 
and take out at least a few days for a quality retreat now there are different kinds of retreats we have a workers retreat as a ministry there are all kinds of retreats families have their retreats but this retreat i'm talking about is a retreat when you are exclusively alone with god not even husband and wife not even father and children no there are certain things god will never tell you in public there are certain things that you will only hear from God when you are alone with him. Are we together? It is, it is a very deep and simple spiritual mystery that guarantees victory. Many believers have not paid attention to it. Retreats, very important. End of year retreats, very important. You must take out time. End of year retreat cannot be done in a few hours. That is laziness. You didn't have a retreat. You just had a quiet time. A retreat should be at least minimum two solid days. You can't spend one day. One day alone should be dedicated to Thanksgiving. Is God speaking to us? So every single one of us and those following online, we must take out time. To have personal retreats what are the activities that should happen in the retreats number one Thanksgiving your end of year retreat is barren of God's power until you begin and lavishly communicate Thanksgiving Thanksgiving what we did here tonight is just a representation. The same way you spend a night vigil praying and putting your needs, you must thank God. Mention them one by one. Let me tell you, I know this about God. He never gets tired hearing people thank him. Lord, thank you. Thank you. You gave me tea. Thank you. Last year it was without blue band. You added blue band this year. So you observed it. You see that? Not Lord, you thank you for the food you gave me. That's a careless thanksgiving. Father, thank you. Last year it was tap water. Now you gave me bottled water. Thank you. That means you are careful. You are forgetting not his benefits. When it comes to requests, we are very meticulous. Lord, give me one, two, three, four. Then when it comes to thanksgiving, we say, Lord, even me, I can't remember. Are you not God? Don't you know everything? I, I just thank you for everything. Let's go to another prayer request. And God says, how selfish. Selfish. When you thank God, mention things one by one. Lord, thank you. I was on my way to Kaduna and the car wanted to capsize. You saved me. Thank you. And God said, ah, this happened January. He said, Lord, I didn't forget. You are too faithful for me to forget that event. He said, you remember this for me? Get ready for another dimension. Thanksgiving. Write it down. Thanksgiving. We must take out quality time to thank him. Number two, I'm teaching you how to maximize, to set the pace to maximize your retreat. What do you do during your personal retreat? Review your progress for the current year. 2017 now that's what you do you sincerely honestly unashamedly review the year and I'll dwell here a bit to help us understand I want all of us to really understand these things the second thing you do at a retreat is to review the year and you don't just review the year carelessly you break your review into six different units write it down the first area is your spiritual life you review your spiritual life review your passion for God review the illumination of the world that you have accessed what do you know now that you did not know last year what do you understand now that you did not understand last year review your character create a scale for it can i say i am improving not just in the knowledge of god am i useful to society am i becoming a leader 
Am I becoming a person of character? So your spiritual life is the first area that you have to review. Let me tell you something about retreats. You must be honest. You see why you have to be alone? Excuse me. You must be honest. You must be unashamed. You must be very sincere before God. Number two, mental development and your capacity. You review that area. Did I cooperate with the word of God to develop my mind? Did I acquire useful informations that will set me on the cutting edge of relevance? Did I just pray and fast and build my life spiritually and allowed my mind and my relevance with my sociological environment to die? Are we together now? Yes, it matters that we not only grow spiritually, but we sustain the ability to be useful. We must be able to communicate the life of Christ to our environment. So you review it. What books did I read? What do I know about leadership? Did I learn anything? Did I build my mind? What do I know about mindsets? Am I still carrying my village in my head, moving around with it? Am I still carrying the attributes that keep me poor and a failure? Am I still carrying the attributes that make good things to live my life? Is God helping us? Number three, review how much you have taken care of your body, your health. In a retreat, yes sir. That's the best place so that you can easily ask for forgiveness when because the only person you really have offended is god this body belongs to him for some of us 2017 has been a useful year spiritually and a careless one health wise is that true review oh this year lord i apologize i ate anyhow i did all kinds of things anyhow destroyed my body why do you make these reviews? Because you need this body to last very long. Are we together? Gone are the days when people don't talk about this in church and they tell people the most important thing is your spiritual life. And you see someone of 32 looking like 50. They ask him how old are you? He said, I will be 33 next year. Say, so, so why are you looking at a condition make crayfish bed? No, you are not a crayfish. You are created in the image and the likeness of God. Some of those sayings, we must start getting them out of the body of Christ. They look very nice, but these are the things that authorize Satan to destroy our lives. Hallelujah. Your health. And some of us, it is not even poverty. It's carelessness. Write that word down. This is a word that you should look at very carefully during your retreat. Many people's lives are destroyed, including their health, because of one word carelessness unattentiveness to details hallelujah number four review your assignment the reason for which God brought you review your purpose your kingdom service these are things that you review at a time of retreat Lord I look at the compass of my destiny did I make progress this year can I say from prophecy to manifestation I have moved forward you see this assignment and purpose thing you, you, you hardly even hear it again people don't talk about it it says lo I come as it is written of me in the volume of the book to do your will the reason why many people have time to waste their life is because they are not occupied with purpose. If purpose does not occupy you, anybody can call you any day and say, are you free, sir? Yes, come and follow me somewhere. God designed your time to be well invested fulfilling your assignment. This idleness that our generation has is because we are not occupied in purpose. And then the recent um i would say trick of the devil is to make people busy but not moving forward motions like sitting on a rocking chair the chair is rocking consistently but you are not making progress oftentimes jesus would retreat and look okay i must be here i must be there your assignment 
your purpose. I don't know my purpose, but you can look at your service in the house of God. Use that as a template. What was your level of commitment? What was your level of diligence? Are we together? Very important. This is what I do during my retreats. Number four. The fourth area. Number what? Number five. I beg your pardon. Your finance. Write it down. Your finances. You have to flog it out in the secret place. Are we together? Now you've looked at your spiritual life, mental transformation, your body, your health. Is that true? And then your assignment, then your finances. We're very unapologetic about the usefulness of financial resources, both in the quality of our lives and kingdom advance. I'm not one of those pretentious people that would downplay the role of financial resources in helping an individual live a useful life. I've shared it again and again with us that living to seek money all your life is a cost. It's not just bad, it's a cost. It's one of the most distracting strategies of Satan. When a man spends all your life looking for money, it's a cost. Nobody was ever designed to do that. What time then do you have in building? This chase for money has made us to leave our children to the hands of Satan, has made us to leave our purpose. There are people called as prophets and apostles, but they only realize one week to their death. They spent their whole life chasing money and they never find it. Please let me say it again and again. Do not ever plan to continue pursuing money all your life. There is an exact time where God should help you put together financial resources that afford you the opportunity to serve God so that you can turn and focus on the more useful things. Making financial pursuit priority in your life forever is a cause. It may be within the time you are seeking, that's all right. So this is very important. Review. Because for some of us, our whole lives is built around money, money, and we never get it. You talk two minutes, money, everything, money. You say Jesus, the person replies back with money. Money, money, every time. You have to review. Is that true? Was I able to engage the keys that bring for wealth and abundance this year? Or I just had it and it didn't work? You will easily know whether you engage it by the results you got. Finance is one area where your disobedience shows immediately. Immediately. So you must be sincere. This year, God gave me one million naira. God gave me hundred thousand naira. What did I do with it? I made a mistake. I gave 100,000 naira to 419ers. You don't jump that. What is the lesson that I have to learn there? Is that true? God gave me 200,000. I bought a shoe and I bought a shirt that is not yet my level to prove a point to people who were not interested. Oh Lord, forgive me. Don't say it's all right. Ask for forgiveness because that is sin. Is that true? When God gives you resources and you waste it, if nobody has told you it is sin, believe me. Lord, I gave you offering of 10, 10 naira. I gave you offering of 20, 20 naira. But my average dinner was 2,000 naira. It's a sign that you are not a serious believer. I know you think, I'm not talking about money. You know that God has helped us. But it's important. These are some of the things that you do during your retreat. A measure of your passion for the house of God, and that includes with your resources. All this 10, 10 naira giving, you know, most times we lie to ourselves that it doesn't matter. The amount does not matter. Are we not Bible students? He that soweth sparingly, what is sparingly? Small, scanty, shall reap, but he shall reap scanty. That's why you get one testimony in four months. Correct? You are reaping. But he that soweth bountifully, lavishly, extravagantly, he said he will reap. The Bible said that scriptures cannot be broken. 
So don't say that it does not matter. It could be a time for you. I remember it was in one of my retreats, honestly speaking, that the Lord challenged me on this. The level of giving was far less than the level of God's blessing on my life. And the Lord rebuked me. And I made up my mind and I made a vow. There is a minimum amount I will never give as offering again forever till Jesus comes. Yes, it's true. It's true. It's true. So review it. What do you understand about finances? Review it. If all you know about finances is business and job is better, you have to sit down and flog that area. Because neither of them in themselves will give you money. Number six, relationships. The sixth area that you will look at in your retreat is your relationships. Marital relationships, career relationships, business relationships, destiny relationships. Some of us almost wasted our year today because of the presence of bad and useless associations. Associations that should have nothing, nothing to do with our lives. It's all this, uh, it's our tribe, it's our church, it's our this. Is that true? The Bible says, he that works with the wise will be wise. But it says the companion of fools will be destroyed. Relationships. It matters. Review them. Review them. Who did you give access to this year? Whose presence destroyed your productivity? Who did you give access to this year that destroyed your potential for more results? Who should you have given access to this year that would have improved your life? Some of you, your relationship here, you even need to go back and check with the Holy Spirit. What degree of access did you give him? Relationships. Now, when you review these six areas, let me be honest with you. Your entire life revolves around these six areas. Your spiritual life, your mental development, your health and physical well-being, is that true? Your assignment, your career, whatever it is, your financial resources and your relationships. There is no man that will ever be a failure if he excels in this area. Usually what I do is that I scale all six areas and look at the best performing area and the worst performing area and I must answer why. I wouldn't just say I will improve. Why? Why was this the best and why was this the worst? If your relationships, for inside, for instance, was the worst this year, what don't I know about friendship? What have I not learned? Maybe I'm neglecting honor. Maybe I'm not valuable enough. Maybe I'm too much of a talkative. Maybe I'm not somebody who can be committed secrets. Maybe I'm somebody who is not friendly. Maybe I'm someone who is jealous. Lord, help me. You write it down. Are you seeing how people grow in retreat? You never come out of that experience the same. No, sir. People jump into the new year and laugh and fast for 10 days or 21 days and become the same old them again. And you see, the Bible says you never put new wine in an old wine skin. If your wine skin is old, nothing new will ever come. You will have to replace that wine skin like a snake molting, shedding off the old skin so that there can be room for expansion. He said, go and borrow vessels. Borrow the wine skin. Borrow not a few. And the more the wine skin, the more capacity for the anointing to function. Is that true? You must take out time. So this is the second thing you do. The first thing, let's review, thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Then the second thing you do is a review of the year. I gave you six aspects of your review. The third thing is that you must plan for 2018. Plan for 2018. I'll tell you how to plan shortly. Please write this, it's very important. Plan for 2018. It's amazing how many people don't plan. They think just because they are writing what they would do, they think that's planning. That's not planning. Many times those things are just wishes because at the end of the year, less than 1% of them ever happen. That's not a goal. 
how do you plan set clear goals in these six areas we just reviewed set clear goals with scriptural backings in each of them I am convinced that if you set a goal in any of these six areas and it doesn't have a scriptural backing it will not come to pass because there is no basis for committing God remember your success is based on your partnership you are not going to plan alone for by the arm of flesh shall no man prevail you must plan and add a scriptural backing that means a spiritual basis for committing God in those areas and then you must add time targets to them every day is not conducive for everything no sir when you buy a product if we pick up this bottle of water you will see there's a little inscription there the manufacturing date and then they write something best before in other words to get the best of this pro this product it should be consumed within this time range Putting time target to your goals puts a healthy pressure on you to be able to achieve them. The reason why I believe that a lot of us have defaulted on our goals is because there is no time allocation. So we make it look like every day is conducive. No, sir. If you build a house at 70 years, it's not a testimony. If you finish school at 60 years, it's not a testimony. Is that true? If a woman gives birth to her first child at 60 years, it's an unusual testimony. It's because it's not supposed to be so. Is that true? If God blesses you at 80 years, who are you going to leave it for? You will be angry and be frustrated. So there are things that we must trust God to help us fast track in our life. Say amen. And let me come to the gentleman and just talk to us a little. Please plan. Turn to any brother seated near and say, brother, plan. Just leave the sisters in one minute. Say, brother, plan. Listen. Spiritual people, spiritual people are some of the poorest planners we have, especially in this country. We don't plan for our greatness. We just hope and wish and pray. Bishop Oyedeko said, praying without planning is playing without knowing. You have to be like Nehemiah. With one hand you are building, but with another hand you are holding the sword. Both hands cannot hold the sword. One hand is holding the sword and another hand is building. He says, every house is built by some man, but God is the builder of all. That some man must build. The horse is prepared for battle, but safety is of the Lord. But it does not stop you from preparing the horse. Are we together now? I expect every gentleman here to start planning, married or not. Sit down and plan. Here's what scripture says. When I was a child, I thought like a child. Correct? I understood like a child. I acted like a child. It says, now that I am a man, I lay aside these childish things. Some of you, that's what will happen in your retreat. You have to sit down and tell yourself, this childishness in my life must go forever. Comma, this foolishness in my life must go forever. This stupidity in my life must go forever. Somehow we have this belief that because God is able, without our engaging him through the application of the wisdom of God, things will just happen just like that. We are tired of irresponsible fathers. We are tired of irresponsible gentlemen. We are tired of nuisances to society. A gentleman who should be capable of feeding and taking care of his siblings and taking care of a generation is still depending on his old and aged parents. Blasting in tongues but depending there. It should not be. It should not be. There is an honor that comes when certain things are in place in your life. Is that true? I'm speaking to everybody, but I'm speaking especially to our gentlemen. Please, let's go back to God and plan. This rat race of visiting everybody. Today you are here. Tomorrow you are there. My brother, what are you doing with your life? You say it is well. No, it's not well. You sit down and plan. What are you doing with your life? 
I want to marry apostle wonderful and eat what show me the blueprint of, of the, not the timetable of your cooking the, the capability to be able to fend and take care of the family especially do you know because in Africa let's be very honest if I handpick everybody here almost everybody here has at least four or five people depending to eat from him is that true leave the ladies gentlemen I'm talking to you I'm coming to the ladies pick anybody at random there is one neighbor one one cousin you know one relative that you didn't even know you are related to that needs you to feed so gone are the days where you say I have enough for myself no you must flog it out plan 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 I will take the month of January to study only on finances even if they give you a message on rapture you say I'm born again I have a goal I'm studying on finances I'm spending the month of February to study on faith on faith I'm studying the month of uh, the month of March to study on the anointing I'm studying the month of uh, June or April or whatever to study on my giftings and potentials. I'm spending the month of July to study on ministry or my assignment. That's how we grow. You don't get up every day and open to any part of scripture and just read and convince yourself that you are growing. You must plan. Are we together? By the grace of God, there, there is almost a message concerning every major area of your life. Go to the media stand. There are teachings. The media department can help you compartmentalize the teachings. If it is success, if it's your spiritual growth, character development, you know, salvation, etc. Whatever it is, there are teachings and they are all free. Camp with them. You must plan. Number four. The fourth thing that I want us to do by the grace of God is that all of us as a family of faith individually we are going to be studying the book of Proverbs write it down we are going to be studying the book of Proverbs all the 31 chapters study not read there's a difference between studying and reading you can take two two chapters and finish it in 15 days you didn't study you read you glance through let's use this break period to extensively study the book of proverbs go online there are all kinds of commentaries that have been done on that book study carefully don't read to finish read to understand the book of proverbs the lord put this in my heart was studying the fifth admonition which comes as an instruction is that every one of us as much as God has granted us the understanding have a sacrificial seed wrapped with expectation this is between you and God a sacrifice is not a seed a sacrifice is bread he said cast your bread upon the water he gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater but there are times he will challenge you to give both the bread and the seed a sacrificial seed I'm already doing mine and I'm doing it again and again it's a principle I have practiced for many years that at the end of the year into the next year they will, I will I will have to commit to something that cost me both to God and to the ministry every year without fail I do this I'm not talking of uh, 10 naira 20 naira something that even you you will stand and say Lord I give you thanks between you and God why are you doing that you are engaging the mystery of sacrifice and securing the year coming now please don't do it if you don't have the revelation this has nothing to do with trying to manipulate money and this is a mistake that men of God make when it comes to things like seeds and sacrifice you see them expressing a lot of desperation I, I always say this every man of God's success is not based on the giving of members it is based on his own obedience to the principles of the kingdom koinonia will only prosper to the degree to which we are complying with the precepts of the kingdom are we together 
these five things, I promise you that when you do them, you will be ready for an amazing 2018. Number one, thanksgiving. Number two, review. That number two for me is one of the most important. You have to review. Don't just wait and say, ah, apostle, send us the prophetic word for next year. My body is shaking. I need to know what is the prophetic word. This is how a lot of people keep recycling carelessness again after again. And, 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 and then again and again, and they find out that the year remains the same. Different words coming, but there's no progress in our lives. So go back, get a notebook. Don't just get a little piece of paper. It's a sign that you are not serious with your own destiny. Get a notebook and sit down and write these things out. Come up by the Spirit. One of the things I can guarantee you that will happen in your silence is that the Holy Spirit will speak to you. He will correct you. He will applaud you. He will rebuke you. He will encourage you. He will challenge you. Let the chastening of the Lord not be something that you resent. Whatever happens in that secret place, embrace it as the refiner's fire. It is going to be the key to your next level. Is that true? Praise God. So you do this. This is my first encouragement for us tonight. These five things. The Lord put it in my heart and I felt to share with us to help us maximize our time. Proverbs chapter 4. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We're reading the first 10 verses. Proverbs chapter 4. Just to encourage us and then we'll pray. Proverbs chapter 4. Is it projected? Okay. Hear ye children the instructions of a father and attend to no understanding for I give you good doctrine forsake ye not my law Solomon is teaching us here for I was my father's son tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother he taught me also and said unto me let thy heart retain my words keep my commandments and leave verse 5 get wisdom get understanding forget it not neither decline from the words of my mouth verse 6 forsake her not who is the heart wisdom understanding forsake her not and she shall preserve thee take note the benefits of embracing wisdom and understanding she shall preserve thee love her and she shall keep thee seven says wisdom is the principal thing therefore get wisdom and with all thy getting get understanding verse 8 says exalt her and she shall promote thee she shall bring thee to honor who will bring you wisdom and understanding not just wisdom wisdom and understanding will bring you to honor when thou dost embrace her we're reading to verse 10 verse 9 she shall give unto thy head an ornament of grace a crown of glory shall she deliver unto you verse 10 hear oh my son and receive my sayings and the years of thy life shall be many from preservation to honor to longevity wisdom and understanding wisdom is the capacity to understand the mind of christ wisdom is the ability to Communicate the scriptural solution concerning every issue of life. The scriptural solution to every issue of life is called wisdom. You are wise to the degree to which you comprehend the ability to 
profess scriptural solution. There are cultural solutions to life's problems. There are occultic solutions to life problems. There are emotional solutions to life's problems. None of them in themselves are able to provide lasting solutions, but the wisdom of God, the wisdom of God. I have pursued the wisdom of God with my life because when I was exposed to my own folly and the fact that I am so limited and the consequences of foolishness, the Bible says he that works with the wise shall be wise himself. But he said just being the companion of a fool, your destruction is guaranteed. If as a companion of a fool you are destroyed, then what happens to the fool? Just being a friend to a foolish man, allowing his foolish decisions to influence you, it guarantees doom for you. That means every fool has no hope. Foolishness is bankruptcy of the knowledge of God's principles. It's not just acting foolishly. The foolish action is a product of bankruptcy in your spirit and in your mind. I'd like us to carefully examine the decisions in our lives. I want us to carefully examine the things that we do. The degree to which you have succeeded is a show of how you have manifested the wisdom of God. Every time results are not produced in your life is because there was a defaulting in the wisdom of God. It's an uncomfortable truth, but it's the secret to rising and pressing for wisdom. I am ever ready to be shown by God the areas in my life where I am bankrupt of the wisdom of God. It doesn't embarrass me. I want to know. I search for it like one who is looking for treasure. If you do not contend for wisdom, your life will be an unending circle of pain, an unending circle of regrets, an unending circle of many things. Most of us look at our lives this year and we can see several points in our lives where foolishness veered us off the path of glory and brought us into a lot of pain. Some of us lost destiny help us some of us lost the gift of men is that true some of us lost opportunities some of us lost access several things no wisdom some of us this year we approached our parents wrongly and right now there is a divide between us and our parents lack of wisdom some of us had zeal with no knowledge and it brought a lot of trouble to our businesses a lot of trouble to our ministries wisdom is very important the bible says it is the principal thing and you see, the bible says i commend you to the word of God, he says he's able to make you wise. The word of God makes men wise. Just by focusing your attention on the word of God and imbibing the principles, the modus operandi of the kingdom, it makes you wise. The word of God teaches you how to relate with difficult people. The word of God teaches you how to speak and when to speak so that you don't get into trouble. The word of God teaches you how to respond to unbelievers many of us come from families where there is a mixture of people who are both of the faith and not of the faith wisdom teaches you how to communicate wisdom teaches you that when you are angry be silent because every time you speak you will speak in the flesh there are many people who just obeying this principle would have saved them businesses worth millions of naira they uttered words that they are still paying for it today are we together our challenges, Dr. Mike Murdoch will say there is no money problem anywhere. And I agree with him. Most of our challenges, because you see, we are victims of our understanding. And most of the things we have executed in our lives are reflections of the limitations of our knowledge, our wisdom, our understanding. Guess what the Bible says? It says, through wisdom, a house is built. Then it says, by understanding, it is established. The firmness of that house is a product of understanding. It says, true knowledge is a house filled with every pleasurable thing. We 
must make up our minds that we are going to access the word of God not just as an instrument to heal us of the guilt of um, spirituality I would say for many people our study of the word is just to so that the devil does not plant any seed in us that we are backsliding but we are not learning anything this is the greatest book that will help your career and your business this is the greatest book that will help your marriage this is the greatest book the sufferings in our world today is because we have ignored the truths that are here we have read it like a religious book we have read it to preach we have read it to to carry out bible studies and prayer sessions but we have not read it for the purpose of accessing wisdom for the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. Listen, there is no age you get to in life that guarantees that all your decisions will be flawlessly accurate. This is the book that coordinates our success. There is no educational height you get to that guarantees that your decision-making process will be accurate. Even if you study psychology, it is not enough to give you all the parameters that are needed in themselves to make wise decisions. I have lost confidence in myself outside of the world. It says, thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path in this wicked world listen this ministry by the grace of God was built on this word I have meticulously built my life on this word I don't trust any other thing that is not this word I bring you a proposition tonight as we round up this year I want you to return to a place where you hold an unquenchable hunger and value for the word. Many of us pray, but our lives are bankrupt of wisdom. Our decisions show the absence of the influence of the word. It's very clear that we are not being governed by the word. I can know how much you have imbibed the word by the excellency and the quality of your communication. I'm not talking of linguistic excellence. I'm talking of the wisdom that flows from your words. I see your behavior. I see how you disappoint your enemy's expectations and I know you have stayed with the world. When you become a victim of people's expectations, wait and see. He's going to shout at this person. Ah, you come and shout. Ah, you have given yourself cheap to life. The word of God is not coordinating you. Jesus disappointed the expectations of the people many times for instance when they brought to him the woman who was caught in adultery they expected he was going to rant because they were talking about the word of God you know every time Satan wants to challenge you he uses scripture Moses said this and Jesus kept quiet wisdom for there is a time to speak and there is a time to be silent there are times where your loudest communication is in your silence your silence will answer more than any word for instance when responding to your critic your critic already knows the truth don't try to explain it's a waste of time you don't respond to critics by verbal communication you respond to critics by consistency consistency of your results is that true when I look at our lives and I see our lives surrounded by pride and arrogance, it is because we have not seen the deception of pride. The deception of pride is like a man climbing a ladder and you take the ladder away. That's exactly what pride does. I love the word of God. I stopped reading my Bible to finish it. I stopped reading my Bible to crime scriptures. I found out that it was truly a roadmap in this darkness darkness where there is deception how many of you have followed people's advices and their advices crashed you not because they were bad people they were just humans 
they advise you to beat your wife if she goes wrong. Say, I tried it on my own wife. Look at how she's behaving now. You tried it on your own wife, and that's when you, you, your prayer stopped being answered. That's the first thing that started happening to you, and many other bad things happened to you. I can look at your life and know how much the word of God has prevailed by the quality of the results that you produce. You see, let me tell you something. If I look at your life and I see you are dirty and tattered, as simple as neatness, I know you don't have respect for the word of God. If the word of God can purge your spirit, then your life will reflect it. You cannot be growing in the world and you are dirty, unkept, looking like a thief all the time and say it does not matter. No, sir. No, sir. The word of God will make you to buy it iron because it will teach you that there is a way you appear before kings there is a way kings behave and the bible tells you that you have been made according to revelation chapter 5 and verse 10 we have been made unto god a kingdom of kings and priests so you speak like a king you act like a king is that true it is the word of god that is the antidote to these conflicts that our cultures create in our heads. Christian versus Hausa, Christian versus Yoruba, Christian versus Igbo. You don't know which one to embrace and which one to leave. I propose to you a culture that is above and superior to every other one. That any part of your culture that does not subscribe to the word of God, eject it immediately. The kingdom is a culture. Most of us, our lives have been destroyed because of our, our unfortunate loyalty to cultural tenets that are completely anti-Christ. So although uh, we are attempting again and again to be spiritual, but the, the thinkings that we have imbibed from culture continue to fight God in our lives. I have no loyalty to anything that is not of God. This is it. This is my new culture. Scripture tells me that I've been called out of every tribe. I'm not saying culture is bad in itself, but trust me, there are demonic and satanic areas. There are certain aspects of cultures that are not seen in themselves, but I tell you there are weights. A weight is something that can provide an impedance. It can stop your movement. It says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So when you are carrying a weight that is destroying your life, in our place, we don't do this. In our place, women cannot talk. Who is this woman preaching? I can't listen to her because in our, which your place? Who invented it? Oh, God is speaking. I will listen. In our place, young people don't talk to old people even respectfully, even under the anointing. Are you seeing that now? It is important that we recalibrate our minds so that we begin to view life from the perspective of the kingdom. They drove children from coming to Jesus. Something about their culture taught them that. And Jesus said, ah, 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 let the little children come to me and do not forbid them. He said, for, for such. That means these children roaming around are teaching you a lesson you are not learning. That until you become like one of these, not childish, but childlike. Very malleable in your faith and understanding. He says, the kingdom is for such. Are you getting blessed tonight? Get wisdom. Get understanding. Make a conscious decision that in the name of the Lord Jesus, although I was born in so-so-so place, I was born under so-so-so condition, by the grace of God, my children will not live under that kind of condition. The Lord by his spirit will lift me. It's not about Nazareth. It's not about where you come from. It's about your ability to walk with the word of God and bring that transformation. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, I have made it a personal commitment as a minister that I will never create seditions or favoritism based on geographic factors. Never, never. You will never see me do that. I love my people. 
wonderful people, love my region where I come from, but by the grace of God, I've traveled to every one of the regions of this nation and they love me unreservedly because I do not and will never, never try to create any sense of superiority of one culture above another. I love everyone. The Bible says there is neither male nor female, neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free. We're all in Christ. So I cannot see Ike and say Ike is Igbo and say um, Pastor Alpha is from Kogi State, Promise is from Delta, and I say you are my person, be careful. Those are the kinds of mindsets that rob us because your destiny helper will come as directed. It may not be from your place. Joseph of Arimathea. The Bible does not record that he was part of the disciples of Jesus. How about Simon of Cyrene? The people who played very major roles in the life of Jesus. Jesus was rejected by his own people. They ran away. Anna the prophetess. Simeon in the temple. Joseph of Arimathea. Look at the strange people who came and attended to him. Wisdom. There are ministries that have crashed into pieces because of lack of wisdom they make it look like if you are this tribe you are not welcome if you are that tribe you are not welcome we must be careful because we are dealing with a global society part of the principles you learn when you study global leadership is that you must concentrate on the points of similarity concentrate on the points of similarity Nobody will be comfortable in an atmosphere where their core values are being insulted simply because you are trying to demonstrate the superiority of another culture. So we unify ourselves as believers with one common culture. It's called the kingdom. The kingdom is God's culture where we allow the influence and the reign of Christ to permeate our lives regardless of our geographic differences. Ah. Elohim Adonai, thy kingdom come, thy will. the Bible that teaches us how to be wise financially. It says a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. So when you see a young man spending as if he would not marry, you see that? Living a fake and a foolish life, that's a selfish man because he's not thinking about his children and his children's children. The Bible says it. The Bible says there is he that scattereth. Hear the wisdom of God. There is he that scattereth and increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. That means there is a relationship between greed and lack. The Bible establishes it. So when there is lack in your life, you check and you see that there is scripture is fulfilled in your life. The Bible talks about tithing, that there is a relationship between the opening of your heavens and your tithing, regardless of whatever opinions are available. Scripture cannot be broken. It is by these two immutable things. God swore his word will not be broken. Heaven and earth will pass away, but brothers and sisters, men and their philosophies and their pride and their arrogance, nations and kingdoms will rise and fall, but the word of God remains consistent. One of the greatest fears, if I would say in my life, is to find out that at the end of my life, I believe they lie. I wasted my time following a man, following a philosophy, and then at the end, he would tell me, I'm sorry, me too, I'm as confused as you. I choose the word of God that liveth and abideth forever. 
this ministry is a tithing ministry i'm a tithing person there is no devil and no doctrine that will ever stop us that's why there is no amount of recession i say it with all humility by the grace of god almighty that is capable of limiting me as a person and limiting the work of god for he said i will build my church and if you allow me build it i will build it in such a manner that the gates of hell will not prevail this is the wisdom of God. I have learned from the wisdom of God that as a man of God, your assignment is to lift up Jesus, not yourself. This is the secret to crowd. You lift up yourself, you pay for it. He says, and I, if I be lifted, the reward for lifting me is mysteriously. I will draw all men, not some men, not some territories. When I found this, I said, Lord, I have no business building any empire. It is about Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords thank god for the honor but i'm so happy to let you know that the one who really deserves all the glory and all the honor is jesus the head of the church the builder of koinonia it came from the word i'm showing you things from the word i have found out in the word of god that when you honor the body of christ there are dimensions you enter it is, it is the word of God that gave me that wisdom. So I can insult a man because I do not like something about him, yet he's carrying an anointing that can help me. It is for this cause many are weak. For this cause many are sick. For this cause many do sleep. There are many people who would have cheaply received miracles, but the vessels that carry the anointing are not appealing to them. The scripture says there is a treasure in earthen vessel. He didn't tell you the vessel is golden. He said the vessel is earthen. So he can be angry like Elijah or temperous like Moses. They still are anointed. When I found out I don't have any problem with any man of God, you never hear me open my mouth and tear down a man and his ministry because I believe that there is always something I can learn. Even if I cannot learn spirituality, I can learn excellence. I can learn leadership. When you search for Jesus everywhere, you will find him. Hmm. I learned from this scripture that as a man, as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. So I stopped wasting my time packaging a reality that is not here. Gone are the days where people try to buy suit, buy shoe with empty understanding and then their minds reduce their lives back. Have you seen territories like that? They try to do physical things. They have not educated the people in that environment. Then they make tap. In six months, they spoil the tap to look like the mindsets of those living in that environment. No sensitization. So I learned that the key to my lifting is not buying clothes, buying shoes, buying all these things to prove a point that I can wait with the Holy Spirit to reconstruct my understanding and that inevitably the things I so admire will helplessly run towards me. Oh my God, and how, how true. This is one of the truest revelations I know in scripture. The supernatural power of the transformed mind and its ability to effortlessly draw to your life the realities that are consistent with your understanding. It is true. Are we together? The wisdom of God tells you there is hope for a tree, even if it be cut short. In our society where we are, we are more than happy to conclude on people, you look at someone and say, this guy used to be an arm robber. There's no hope for him. But when you study the word of God, the Bible is full of people that God transformed their lives overnight. And my Bible says that rejected stone. Ha! Ah, that rejected stone. I'm speaking to someone in your family. And all the nonsense and rubbish that they say about people. 
There are people who started this year with their pride of spirituality. And right now, they are, not, they are almost not even born again because their pride humbled them. They maintained their spiritual life by themselves. But there are people who started this year saying, Lord, if you are looking for any vessel, can you use this drunkard? And God said, that's all I want. Come. And right now, as I speak to you, they are in various stages around the world, setting up place the kingdom of darkness because he uses the foolish things. When you understand this, you will never run your mouth at anybody and conclude on people. You don't see a woman who is frying a car and look and say, oh dear, poor woman, because God can pick someone. You see, the word of God makes men wise. The way we speak sometimes shows that we have not read scripture. Whether it is a poor man, a rich man, I will hug you and greet you. I won't say you, you are this. Go, no, no. Of course, I will give you honor. Because God, I have seen in my little life how God has transformed people overnight and made princes to be servants and servants to become princes. If the barber of Joseph knew he was barbing the prime minister, he would have begged him and said, Sir, don't forget me, oh. There were people of Bas and John lifted simply because they dared to advise him while he was in prison. When he came out, he sent for them, created one committee and dropped them there. He said, quit before I change the committee. And he said it very openly, not anything in the hiding. I brought this person here because he was there for me. Wisdom. Wisdom teaches you to be there for people at their worst areas because they will never forget you. People will forget you when they, if, if, if I hold a banquet for plenty people, you hold that banquet as a king, so you forget everybody. But when someone comes to you in the cave of Adulam, you say, I will never forget you. Everybody ran away from me, but you stood here. One of the quickest way to be rich is find somebody rising. Find a vision rising. Be part of it with all diligence. That's a free ride to the wealthy place. I guarantee you. Some of our parents today know people that would have changed their life in a heartbeat. They are crying for rent. Whereas somebody that they would have helped with 50 naira 20 years ago would give them an estate today. The word of God making us wise. Making us wise. Making us wise. Making us wise. Hold your Bible in one minute. And I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, there is, there is wisdom in this scripture. There is wisdom in this scripture. There is wisdom in this scripture. I'm tired of foolishness in my life. Lord, I come to terms with the fact that my decisions are obviously showing a bankruptcy of the word of God. The quality of my decisions are a revelation that the wisdom of God is not at work in my life. The quality of my decisions, the quality of my results are questioning the efficacy of the word of God in my life. Are you praying? I'm not asking you whether you have been faithful with Bible study. I'm not asking you whether you have been faithful with your, your devotion or whatever it is. I am asking you, have you allowed the wisdom of God to influence your understanding? Do you live your life trading the mysteries of the kingdom? Or do you live your life guessing and hoping that at a point in your life things will change? It's risky to run your life by your own your own formula. Hallelujah. Sit down. The wisdom of God, come. The wisdom of God teaches us how to relate with people. Is that true? When, when you study the wisdom of God, the word of God, you will know that whoever wants friends will not sit down and say, call me, text me, be my friend. That friendship is a harvest. You have to sow the seed. So if I sit down and I find out that I love God, but there are no friends. As a lady, nobody likes me. As a guy, nobody likes me. The secret is that something about your life is creating an environment that is pungent to friendship. See that? When you lack helpers in your life, the Bible gives you a prescription. 
and help us in your life i can tell you immediately there are things you are not doing among them there is no prophecy on your life because destiny helpers don't come on their own it is one aspect of your life that it is pure prophecy that calls them words to program woes. Ladies, ah, it is not for us. We are not us. We are the, we are the, um, uh, what they call that thing? We are the outcasts. We are the ones who our parents cannot just leave it to these people. And the Bible says, do not say before an angel, I made a mistake. We have programmed nonsense and rubbish. A name God did not call you. You have allowed yourself to be called it again and again. You called yourself ugly. There is nowhere in scripture where you are called ugly. You call yourself irresponsible. The word of God does not call you that way. Open my eyes. Help me believe. I am what you say. Hallelujah. So French. The Bible says, cast not away your confidence. Confidence is not pride. Confidence is psychological stability that is on the strength of the truth you have found in scripture. That's confidence. Stability that is based on the truth of God's word. If you tell me, Apostle, I, I was passing across a shrine and I heard them talking about you, that they will kill you tomorrow. I'm going to sleep this night. I won't wake up and do any special prayer through the night of God. And it can't be joy, it's a joke. If you know the mysteries that keep this man standing, yeah, yeah. Uh -uh. you surround yourself with mysteries like chariots. When the spirit of death knocks on your door, three scriptures come out like, like fire. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. Number two, honor your father and your mother that your days may be long and that it shall be well with you. Number three, I set before you life and death. Blessing and cursing, I advise you and I chose it. Do you fight a man outside his will? Even God stands in the door of your heart and knocks. Why wouldn't Satan knock? Why wouldn't death knock? If God is knocking to enter. I don't know about you. The Bible says a man who has no control over his spirit is like a city without war. Anything that must enter my life, if God knocks to enter, nothing will enter on his own. It's my revelation. So when men say there is a casting down, they allowed it somewhere. For me, when it knocks, I say, get back. For me, there is a lifting up. See, I'm not just entertaining you. I'm showing you how the word of God makes a man wise. It constructs your understanding. The Bible says he daily loads me with benefit. I expect favor every day, recycled after 24 hours. It's not because I'm a preacher. I expect it. I found it. I found thy word and I ate it. It was a joy and a rejoicing. The word was not written for preachers, brothers and sisters. It was written for those who can believe. My mother started learning these principles and you would find that people will start calling take a bag of rice give your mother take this give your mother working for her she's not a preacher and it's not because she's my mother it works for anybody he said declare ye that he might be justified i will never say i am a failure no sir no sir no sir no sir just because there is no food in your room, most believers will come, Kite, this life self, Aluta Continua, Victoria Escarta, it's a, it's a curse. You are reciting, you are enchanting, it's the same thing as being given a charm in a herbalist shrine, and you read it. That's what we have been doing. You come in and you see lack and insufficiency, you declare, while I look not at the things that are unseen, but the things that are seen. For the things that are seen are temporal, subject to change, but the things that are unseen, I know that one day I will feed nations. Come on now. You are going through times in your life you don't understand what is happening. You don't give room to depression. 
Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I know my Redeemer lives. The Bible said Job did not curse God. The way we act is a revelation as to whether the word of God has worked in us. You go back and you meet friends. Ah, a mega, and then they say one kind of very devilish, poisonous, and vulgar word. You call a human being a dog, you call a human being, it used to be a joke, but now that you have the revelation, you lovingly say, no, I'm not a dog. I know exactly dogs in scripture are used to communicate Gentiles and people who are at the basest levels of life. I will not confess that. The Bible says he has made me a king and a priest. I remember when I was in secondary school, there's something they call Yabi. Do you know it? Where two people will sit down and look for very nasty expressions, very vulgar descriptions of themselves. The goal is for it to be funny. So somebody, usually there are a group of people who are like the referees. I will say my own, you'll be angry and say your own, and then, you know, that's why people were not doing well. Notice people enter just one, and by the time they finish writing exams, they come out, the only thing they come out with is a good certificate. Common sense gone, health gone. They are sick, they have troubles. God has not given me the spirit of fear. The Bible says I shall not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day. In my world, there's nothing like ember months. He daily loads. This is the day the Lord has made. He didn't say the Lord and Satan, the Lord alone made that day. Satan too was waiting for God to make the day. It was God that made the day. I rejoice in it and I am glad. You will never see me frowning my face and you ask me why. I said, Kai, this world, Nigeria. I said, no. He said, for with joy shall I draw. I've taught you this. Frustrate Satan by remaining joyful. He said, rejoice in the Lord, not in your results. If you rejoice in your results, the day you don't see it, you will not rejoice again. If you rejoice in your CGPA, your job, your new employment, I rejoice in the Lord eyes are on him regardless of the results my eyes are on him you pick a medical report and he looks at you he says the, the medical report says you have all kinds of lumps and all kinds of growth and the devil says that's it oh. in case you don't know the name is cancer it's just that it's forming come keep watching and you sit down and go online signs of cancer they say it starts like lumps hey, hey, hey. <laughs> you come and meet a maker and then he will confirm it to you he says it's true and drop that report and say Lord if I die who will dance you are reducing the number of people who will praise you ask Hezekiah Isaiah went to him in chapter 38 and said Hezekiah set your house in order Hezekiah said nonsense I respect you you are a prophet of God but leave me and God shut the door Hezekiah said God what did I hear you say remember your temple when you talk about the temple, God listens. So, Lord, your house. So, and he said, No, 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 please, Isaiah, go back. Go back. Go back. I think it was a prayer department. I was, I was, um, Yes, on Tuesday, I was rounding up their session with them and I told them something. I said, as a worker in this ministry, there are benefits that should be yours. They are not, they are not privileges, they are rights. As a worker, there are certain things that should be yours. The Bible said a worker is worthy. The word worthy there is deserving of his wages. Not just a worker in Koinonia. A worker in the house of God. The closest simile to wages is salary. That means that there should be something that leaves heaven for me. You have gotten your salary for being a civil servant of Nigeria. Have you gotten your salary for being a worker in the house of God? Is God speaking to you? The way I speak the way I understand is a revelation when you look at your child and beat your child and kick your child and say you are you are an idiot you are a stupid child I don't know why you and your foolish mother 
you are revealing something. The kicking is a revelation. It's a revelation that number one, you don't know that children come from God. Number two, you do not know that fatherhood is an office recognized in the realm of the spirit. There is a priesthood office that fatherhood has. The mother of Jabez was angry. She didn't know that motherhood is an office. And out of her anger, she named her child Jabez. Every time Jabez was to be good, that office cried in the realm of the spirit. And one day Jabez was angry and said, no, I can't continue like this. I can tell you more than half of Africans are carrying all kinds of tragedies that the office of father and mother provided out of anger. Your father looks at you and just says, look, it will not be well with you just because that time you were in the world and you stole his shoe or you stole a goat and went to go and sell it and he looked at you and in anger, he cursed you. He said, this is how you will be like a goat all through your life. And you would think it's a joke until you find out you put a goat side by side with the way you are behaving and you see that it's exactly the same. True story, I'm rounding up. I know a gentleman that the mother cursed him and said until a rat stops stealing, he will not stop stealing. Yes, true story. God is my witness. He was a popular face that I knew. This guy will come out of prison now as they are waving him, sign it. In two weeks, he's coming back again. That prophecy secured the spirit of theft in his life. Comfortable. The only thing that can set him free is the anointing. You see the reason why we speak over people? Yes. You speak over people to superimpose and veto the ordinances that have been communicated upon their lives. Listen, brothers and sisters, I want you to understand that these are spiritual ordinances. Fatherhood and motherhood did not end with the Old Testament. In the New Testament, a man treats his wife bad and the Bible says his heavens will be closed. This is why many fathers are going through hard life in Nigeria. I'm telling you this. This attitude of treating mothers and treating women as if they are a piece of rag. You are a father here. Please, I apologize. I have great respect for men. I'm one. I've been one all my life. So I, I don't in any way downplay men. But I want to be sincere with you. The way you treat your wife, not a woman, your wife, will determine whether your heavens will be close or not. So you can labor. You finish insulting your wife. Call her stupid woman. You and all your five useless children. You are going for the business meeting. They call you when you are almost there and say, sir, just go back. It won't work again. You say, what do you mean it won't work? I just prepared my paper, the heavens. You always know when the heavens are closed because a forest becomes a fruitful vine and becomes a wilderness. depletion from as they say from grace to grass close them that's why the bible says until the spirit be poured upon us like rain from high then a wilderness will become a fruitful vine then a fruitful vine will be counted for a forest thank you hallelujah we're going to pray tonight and then i'm going to speak over your life I really believe in the power of prayer. Listen, let me encourage you. With these keys that I've shared with you, I expect every wise young man, whether you are staying with your parents or not, or if, if both of your parents have gone to be with the Lord, you have spiritual parents, you have all kinds of representatives. If I were you, do something for your earthly parents that will provoke a blessing from them. As you are going home now, don't just go as a big man, big man, no money, close heavens. Go and meet your parents. Mommy, I don't have so much money, but I made pepper soup for you. I went round the city looking for bush meat that you like. I found it. Ah, oh, really? My daughter, you mean bush meat? Okay, God bless you. Ah, mommy, no. I came with this one specially. Please pray for me. What kept you and daddy for 50 years? Let that grace come. Your mother will look and say, kneel down. That's it. I can guarantee you that prayer is not noise. 
He said, go and make me venison that I may bless you. You don't bless without venison. The foolishness of your people. You stroll to anybody and they don't bless me. You think he works like that? Was, I, was it just because he was hungry? It's a principle. Honor your father and your mother. I'm telling you, this is some of us. This is what will break this joblessness, these problems. Some of us, you just need to go back home and say, Mommy, I'm sorry. For five years, I have given you a lot of headache. You people don't even like seeing me. But I want to tell you that I got connected to a ministry and God has changed my life. I just want you to speak over my life. I don't have much, but I came with 100 Naira recharge card. They may have 10,000 Naira in their phone, but that 100 Naira is what will open you up. They will say, kneel down. Let me tell you, whether your father is a believer or not, if he speaks to you, it's an office. It will open your destiny. Are we together? You go back home and you see the people in your community loitering their life. Christmas is when people die from bike as a result of drinking. They learn how to ride bike during Christmas <laughs> until they die from it. And you just sit and say, look, three or four friends, let's see what we can do. One day, small program somewhere at the back of one football field. Put one speaker and the rest. Organize something, even if it's for the children. Instead of our little children dancing all this devilish dance that they start spoiling the hearts of these small children, gather them. Let them, even if it's biscuit and soap or something, you have done something noble for the kingdom. And then take God on Exodus chapter 23, verse 25. You shall obey and serve me. And I will bless your bread and water. I will take sickness far away from you. There will not be barrenness in your life and your days I will prolong. Lord, I served you during this break. I come for the blessings that follow service. Are you ready to pray? Please rise up on your feet. Hello, him Adonai, thy kingdom come. together and begin to pray in the spirit and seal the remaining part of this year. Seal the remaining part of this year. Go ahead and pray. counsel that I should experience for 2017 and is still lagging in my life. The remaining days that we have, I think we should have about 20, maybe about 16 more days. Am I right? 16 days is too much for God to do a fearful miracle. Open your mouth and release your faith. Move, oh God. Move, oh God. In 16 days, you can still confirm your word concerning my life. Mm -hmm. 
serious prayer right now most of us are going back maybe to spend the break with our loved ones or around I'd like you to pray when Jonah entered a boat people started weeping and losing everything because one man in disobedience was in the boat he made the boat unusually heavy and was about to capsize but when the act of God entered the house of a man called Obed Edom without prayer in 90 days three months everything changed I like you to pray and say Lord I am a living tabernacle as I go home or wherever it is that I'll be going to I represent your possibilities I represent the act of God go ahead and pray I go home to smash the works of darkness Every activity of divination, every activity of darkness over my loved ones. In the name of Jesus, as I step my feet, I decree and I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost, the heavens are open unto me. In the name of Jesus, I challenge every force. Hallelujah. Praise God. Don't be tired of praying. I want us to challenge three demonic forces over our family. Listen. One is the spirit of sickness and infirmity. Two, the spirit of poverty and hardship. Three, the spirit of death. Lift your voice and curse them. Lift your voice and curse them. In the name of Jesus, I represent the government of heaven over my life and my family. I command the spirit of death, take your hands off my loved ones. There will be no sound of mourning. In the name of Jesus, pray. I come against necromancy. I come against manipulations of the consolations to destroy the life of any one of my loved ones. They are covered. I lift the standard of the blood. I lift the standard of the blood. Shake it, take it, take it, take it. I leave the standard of the blood. No death, not by accident, not by terrorism, not by plane crash. I cause sickness, I cause infirmity, I cause sickness. We cause cancer, we cause arthritis, we cause hepatitis. We cause every killer disease, every terminal disease. Take your hands of our loved ones. We cause the spirits of poverty and hardship, stealing resources from our loved ones. Go 
causing conflict in homes. Kapoto sekete, ete kete bekoto shote brekeri alaba. Pray, challenge the spirit. I come against you in the name of Jesus. Are you ready to pray? I'd like you to program favor that as I step out all through from now till January when I come back is going to be favor whether you have an uncle or not financial favor all kinds of open doors open your mouth and declare it create it I command favor in the name of Jesus I call for the help us for my family, help us for my destiny. Lord, I receive, I receive, I receive all kinds of favor, all kinds of favor. Favor, men are rising, men are rising. In the name of Jesus, favor. Hallelujah. Listen, I want you to believe me. We are rounding up. But you see, not many people in this life have truly encountered favor. Favor. It's an experience that happens once, but the result continues without stop. We are going to pray this prayer again. Listen, the hardship in many of our families, even salary, will not cure it. Is that true? There are some of us now, if you get a job and you are giving your loved ones 300,000 per month, even after five years, it will not solve the problems. 15 people in the house, only one person is working, is earning 20,000. That's a cost. When I say favor, I'm not saying look at your employer to give you one bag of rice or one of your rich uncle in America. Take your mind away from any man. Don't add faces. Your own is to just create with your words. Are you ready to pray? For me and for my family, Lord, surprise us. Surprise us before December 31st. Lord, do something that has not been done. A major dimension of favor. Pray, no matter what kind you have seen, provoke another. Provoke another. Pray, provoke another. In the name of Jesus, I create it. I call it for. I call it for in my life. I call it for in this ministry. I call it for for my loved ones. I call it for strange favor between now and 31st December. Strange favor. Hallelujah. We'll soon round up. I'd like you to pray. Listen, one of the major reasons why there is trouble in our homes is because someone there has not given his life to Christ and therefore does not subscribe to the value system of the kingdom. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? It is terrible to have someone in a family that does is has not given his life to Christ or is not interested in being passionate especially if they have authority over you because they will force you to stay in their mood you pray for 30 minutes they say are you the first to be born again I have been born again I like you to pray two things Lord massive encounters I like you to pray for your loved ones that don't know Jesus. Lord, this is this is the season they must encounter Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. I 
pray for my brother. I pray for my sister. I pray for my father. I pray for my mother. I pray for my uncle. I pray for my step siblings. Pray, pray. Lord, we are tired of the challenges that their lack of encountering Christ is bringing to us financial troubles, spiritual troubles, they continue to become doorways and portals through which darkness comes in to destroy and invade. Give them an encounter. Give them visions. Give them dreams. In the name of Jesus, break their pride, oh God. Give them solid encounters. Encounters with your power. Change them, change them, change them. Some of them have vowed that they will never give their life to Christ. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, in your majesty, prove them wrong. Prove them wrong. Hallelujah. One last prayer and then we're done for tonight. Listen. All these prayer points I'm giving you, when you go back, pray them. Especially this prayer of salvation. I can tell you this. With the little experience I have counseling families, 90% of the problem is that there is someone who is comfortably a gateway for Satan to destroy people. Notice how Satan does it. In every family, he must search for somebody. One bad boy, one bad girl, or maybe our fathers, our mothers, everyone tries to press into God. You just hear that police are calling you. Go to the police station. They will tell you they've caught your brother stealing a laptop. The bill is 400000 And before you know it, the money you have saved, that's a devourer. You see young people do especially all these young guys steal something shamefully come and put their parents in trouble the money that should be the school fees of five people you have to take it and go and settle police is the devil what about the young boys that have not reached age of driving they smuggle out a car and go somewhere an expensive car they just bought with their friends get drunk and smash the car these are all the skinnings of darkness. Many parents today are almost dying of depression because of the stubbornness of their children. A lady jumps the fence and disappears one week. Nobody has seen her. They are all afraid. They start contacting the police, paying money, and then she strolls in after eight days and says, why are you looking for me? It's the devil. A smart young gentleman about to graduate they will go and find him under the gutter because he went for a, a nonsense party Christmas party that is the birth of Jesus Christ drinks to stupor and the friends strip, strip him of phone and everything and they leave him on the ground they come and carry him in the morning arrest him in the police station and the whole family spends Christmas going to the station I like you to say the devil is a liar. I'm, I'm showing you these are the things in, in many families. Satan does not want to see everybody rising. You see a gentleman, the only graduate, and because he's a giver, a wicked accident will happen and just destroy both of his legs. Or one kind of devilish sickness where there will be chemotherapy or something that is eating over 70 to 100,000 per week. In six months, it has dried the finances of the family. He said, I will stand upon my watch and set myself upon the tower. You have to be watchmen when you are at home. Don't see things happen and join everybody cry. You know what to do. Go and lock yourself and say, Lord, this cannot continue to be. Quarrel between father and mother. Quarrel between husband and wife. All these bad, bad things the devil brings during this season. A time of joy and merriment. All of a sudden, that spirit comes into our families. Fire on the mountain. Everybody's living like a stranger. Don't you see that is an attack? I'm telling you so that when you go back home, everybody used to run away, but now you are the one who will move and say, no way. I put an end to this evil in the name of Jesus.
Lift your hands, let me speak over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, as you return back, you return in the power of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Any name and any identity the devil has given your family that is a mockery to redemption. I stand here in the name of Jesus and I declare that within this one month, may the Lord change your story. I pray from the depth of my heart for any individual and any family that is called Ichabod that the glory has departed i declare that because of your going back let there be a restoration of glory let there be a restoration of honor let there be a restoration of dignity anyone here still trusting god for a job i'm declaring you will not return next year without a job in the name of jesus christ I decree and declare if there is any manipulation of witchcraft for those of you who are traveling to the village and there are all kinds of warnings here and there either because your people are used to witchcraft I declare you will go and come back safely you will go and return safely in the name of Jesus hear me any strange spirit that enters your family during these times of love to scatter the families i declare in the name of jesus their end comes this season hallelujah there are families right now who are even waiting for you to come because even one chicken they cannot afford for christmas i call on my god i cry before the god of heaven that between now and next week let there be a miracle of supplies supplies a miracle of supplies a miracle of supplies hallelujah thank you jesus when an atmosphere where his presence is mighty great <laughs> Ah, my capo so pare. Then copa. You are beautiful beyond description. You're to my loss forward. You're too wonderful for God. Like nothing ever seen or heard, ever seen. Come on, inside and outside, let's worship Him. Who can grant Who can fathom the depths of your love? You are beautiful beyond description. Majesty and throne on high, inside and outside, can you lift your hands as we stand in awe of the mighty God? Time. Let's join the saints and the angels. I stand in love. I stand in all of you. I stand in love. Holy God.
Matthew chapter 4. Such a mighty presence of the Holy Ghost in this place. There will be a rain of miracles, signs, wonders, deliverances, emancipation, a release. Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness, and all manner of disease among the people. 24. And his fame went throughout all Syria. And they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments. And those who were possessed with demons. And those who were epileptics. And those who had palsy. And he healed them. And he healed them. Chapter 8. Chapter 8, verse 16. And the evening was come. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with demons. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that they were sick. 17. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, He himself took our infirmity and bore our sickness. Chapter 9. Verse 35. And Jesus went about all cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Hallelujah. Please be seated for just five minutes. Hallelujah. My heart is touched by the hunger and the expectation. I understand that several people came here trusting God for diverse kinds of miracles. Others miracles in their bodies. Miracles in their finances. Miracles in their spiritual life. But I needed to understand that no matter how impossible the situation looks, the power of God is present. Are you listening? I have good news for you. You don't have to go back the way you came because Jesus is in this place. Oh, and he's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's the Alpha and Omega. The first and last is he. The cross of sin is broken, we have perfect liberty. For the Lamb of God is with us. alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's the Alpha and Omega. The first and the last. The first and last is he. The cause of sin is broken. We have perfect liberty. For the Lamb of God is risen. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. Hallelujah. Jesus is alive. And he went 
about doing good. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And he said he went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. The word of God says for this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may liquidate, annihilate, destroy the works of the wicked one. Satan is a very wicked person. I need you to know that from the Garden of Eden, sickness, poverty, failure, retardation, these things were not part of the packages of God. Until you are convinced that God is not the author of these things, your heart will not be open to receive. Are you listening to me? So point number one is to believe that the enemy had done this. The Bible says God is love. Say after me, God is love. And say after me, God is good. A lot of people have been convinced that God is the author of sickness. God is the author of failure. And we've given Satan an opportunity to destroy our lives. We keep justifying the things that Satan brings to our lives. But tonight I need you to know that Jesus came to destroy all that Satan had done in our lives. Hallelujah. Jesus is not the author of sickness. I don't care what kind of sickness it is. Jesus is not the author of failure. He's not the author of poverty. He's not happy when a man and his wife are fighting at home because of lack of money. He's not the author of all of these kinds of things that we suffer in our society. Hallelujah. Number two, I needed to understand that Satan has been defeated. Say after me, Satan has been defeated. A lot of believers treat Satan as though he is yet to be defeated. And so we try to defeat him. No, sir. When Jesus hung upon that cross, he said, it is finished. The Bible makes us to understand that he made a public show. Satan and his cohorts triumphing over them in judgment. So Satan has been defeated. Over your life, over your health, over your finances. Satan has been defeated. It's important that you are convinced that Satan has been defeated. Hallelujah. Satan will not be defeated. Satan has been totally and completely defeated. Hallelujah. Number three. The victory has been given unto you. Oh, you need to know this. A lot of people know that Christ has the victory. But very few understand that he has given this victory to the church. Say after me, I have the victory. Say after me, I have the victory. One more time, say, I have the victory. The next point, faith is the victory. Faith, kapo satabadiaka. Faith is the victory. The Bible says, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Even our capacity to believe the report of the Lord. He said, who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been made known? You've got to believe God's report. Whose report have you been believing? Medical doctors? Let me tell you something. There is no sickness represented on the earth that does not have a testimony of someone who has been healed from it including death there is no sickness and the word of god tells me that jesus christ is the same yesterday the same today the same forever cancer has been healed blindness has been healed deafness has been healed 
demonic oppression, people have been set free. Your case is not new. Solomon said, there is nothing that is new under the sun. Hear me. The word of the Lord has been tried through all of this and been found faithful. That's why we believe his word. Oh, Lord, I believe your report. So tonight, will you, for one minute, lay aside the report of doctors? Thank God for the medical people. They are doing their best and we appreciate them. But tonight, will you squeeze away every testimony that contradicts the integrity of God's word? That's why you came. I'm stirring up faith in you because God is going to be doing great and mighty things. Hallelujah. When you comprehend the might and the majesty of God, you will know that there is no situation that is too great for you. When Isaiah saw him, the Bible says in the year that King Uzziah died, I, Isaiah, saw the Lord. And he saw him high and lofty, mighty, great. He didn't look like he could be intimidated by any situation. God is not intimidated by any situation. And so let faith rise in your spirit. It doesn't matter what area of your life you've been suffering. It's not called a healing service. It's called a miracle service. So whether healing miracles, whether financial miracles, let me tell you something. You must make up your mind that the struggle in your life will end. Are you listening to me? The Bible says, woe to them who are at ease in Zion. Until you get annoyed and dissatisfied with your present situation, you will never move forward. Hallelujah. When a baby is nine months old in the womb of the mother, the baby begins to express severe dissatisfaction, a call for a change of environment. Hallelujah. And you must get dissatisfied. I need for your heart to be opened, to say, Lord, I'm not going back the way I came. Many of us have come with all kinds of challenges, prayer requests, Many of us have come from far and near. You cannot afford to go back the same. Are you listening to me? There are many families that are represented here. Being buffeted by Satan. But I need you to know that Jesus is alive. And let the oppression end tonight. I don't care what the sickness is. HIV, cancer, tumor, whatever it is. It will melt in the light of his glorious presence. Satan has had a field day molesting people, including believers. And that's why God led us to put a miracle service. A special, notable miracle service. Where God will set you on a course and a plane. Where God will, there are many of us that certain doors are just closed. It works for everybody until it gets to your turn. Why will you not move forward in your life? Am I provoking someone? You must see the need for a miracle. You may not be sick, but is this the best of your life? Hallelujah. It's time for the Lord to upgrade our lives. The Bible says Gentiles will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your eyes. There is a beauty and glory that God wants to leave as a deposit of his presence so that the world will know that Jesus reigns. Hallelujah. He's a merciful God. There are many of us here that what the Lord will be doing, your miracle is to be separated from your past. A total separation like the Red Sea separated the Israelites from the Egyptians. God is going to be burying some things about your life that has stopped you from moving forward. There are many of us that God will be laying to rest certain habits and things, strongholds that impede our movement. The Bible says, seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, 
It says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us. And I'm happy because many of us will find rest from sin tonight. Yes. There are many of you who have come, you have struggled in this life. Being a servant unto sin and unto Satan. But John chapter 3 verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have the way. Eternal life. A quality of life that is superior to sin and Satan and sickness and death. Hallelujah. There are many of us that have been victims of tragedies in our families. Again and again. By the way, if you did not bring your prayer request, now is the time you can please collect a, a paper, a pen and a paper. For those of you who received it as text messages, as you're listening to the message, just have it because we're going to be praying. And let me tell you something. No devil will stop your prayer from being answered tonight. I'm preparing your heart for what the Lord will do. While I was preparing for this meeting, I spoke to the Lord and I said, Lord, my life must show forth a greater dimension of your glory. And I prayed, I said, Lord, I'll be the first partaker of this miracle. And someone sent me a text and reminded me of this scripture that said the husband man shall be the first partaker. Hallelujah. The first partaker. And so I welcome you tonight to a feast of miracles. A feast of the manifestation of the spirit in your life. Many of you will leave this place stepping into unusual realms of visions, unusual realms of power, unusual realms of grace supernatural you will be so full of the Holy Ghost that when you step out of this place your world will know there is something about your life and so Holy Spirit we thank you Holy Spirit thou art welcome in this place Holy Spirit thou art welcome in this place omnipotent father of mercy and grace thou art welcome in this place one more time holy spirit thou art welcome holy spirit thou art welcome Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace, thou art welcome in this place. So I like for your faith to rise. Take away the walls and all the things that look like limitations. Are you listening to me? I like you to say, God is able, and He will give me a new name. The Bible says He will give you a new name. Say after me, God is able, and He will give me a new name. So let faith rise in your spirit. As the power of God moves, healing, setting men free, stepping men into levels of glory and wisdom and blessings and favor, make sure that you are a part taker. Press like the woman with the issue of blood and say, if I may but touch the helm of his garment. That woman did not consider her reputation are you listening to me? Many of you will need to lay aside your reputation and press. And say, Lord, if it takes me rolling on the floor, I will press. Some things about my life will change. Hallelujah. 
Many of you will need to hold on to him like Jacob and say, Lord, I will not let you go. You've got to drop a deposit of your presence upon my life and upon my destiny. And let the nations know that my God is alive. And I prayed for every one of you. And I said, Lord, for as many who will come and hear me, all of you, inside and outside, I need you to know that his presence is here. His presence, his glorious, manifest presence is here. The last scripture and then we'll begin to pray. Luke chapter 4. Oh, I sense such an unusual presence of the Holy Ghost. The Lord told me there will be an unusual activity of angels. Unusual angelic activities. Luke chapter 4. Verse 16. Luke 4, 16. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. Verse 17. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To preach deliverance to the captives. And recovery of sight to the blind. To set at liberty them that are bruised. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day, when? 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 Today. Say this day. I'd like you to prophesy over your life. This day. This scripture will be fulfilled in my life. Say after me, this day, tonight, tonight, not tomorrow, tonight, this scripture will be fulfilled in my ears. Rise up on your feet. Let your spirit be open. Kabo Sataya. The power of God is strong mighty in this place go ahead and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost set the atmosphere as you pray in the Holy Ghost everywhere inside and in the overflow go ahead and begin to pray unto the one who is able unto the mighty God the lion of the tribe of Judah Leka paria gabalaka, le korea te basata baliaka, renda koso bariaka tai. Go ahead and bless the name of the Lord. Say, Lord, I know you are able. My heart is open. I came for business tonight. I came for business tonight. I came for business tonight. I came to receive a miracle. of Judah the Lamb upon the throne we hail you most high the Lion and the Lamb Lion of Judah hail his majesty the Lamb
Someone you you came here, you've been having pain on the right side, just the right side of your hand. I'd like you to come out quickly. Pain on the right side of your hand. Inside, outside, please be attentive. Pain on the right side. The Lord is going to heal you. Pain at the right side, the right side of your hand. Pain at the right side, the Lord heals you in the name of Jesus. Be healed by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of the Lord Jesus, go back and check yourself. Make sure you check yourself. Be healed by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of the Lord Jesus, be healed now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let that pain go. Go, go, go. By the power of the Holy Ghost, be healed by the power of the Holy Ghost. Be healed by the power of the Holy Ghost. Be healed by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus, go back and check yourself. Do what you couldn't do. Swing your hands. Do what you couldn't do. Be healed now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Be healed by the power of the Holy Ghost. Be healed by the power of the Holy Ghost, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Be healed by the power of the Holy Ghost. Test yourself. Check yourself. Make sure you check yourself. In the name of the Lord Jesus, be healed by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. If you are suffering from ulcer, ulcer, every kind of peptic ulcer, peptic ulcer, I'd like you to run out here quickly. Ulcer, confirm. Medically confirmed ulcer. Hurry up and run out here. The power of God, where you are standing, there is such grace and power. Peptic ulcer, inside and outside. You came for a miracle. Many of you, as you stand here, the power of God, the power of God, will begin to touch you even before we pray for you. There's a glorious atmosphere. There is a stirring of the waters. Peptic ulcer.
everyone that was prayed for, I'd like you to shout, I am healed. Now check yourself. Breathe in and breathe out. Check yourself. Many of you will find out that you just received a miracle. Check yourself. Check yourself. Check yourself. Celebrate it. There are miracles all around. Supernatural miracles. Check it. Check yourself. Check yourself. Check yourself. Members of the media, just locate the members of the media and register your testimony. Check yourself. Breathe in and out. No devil will stop you. Hallelujah. Every kind of growth, I don't care what it is. Hear me. Every kind of growth, Cancer, fibroid, I'm not going to ask you to come out, but I want to pray for you. Right where you are, hear me, there is such an unction in this place for the miraculous. Are you listening to me? There is the gift of faith and the working of miracles. Also, every kind of cancer die now in the name of Jesus. Cancer die now in the name of Jesus. Fibroid be gone. Fibroid be gone. Fibroid be gone. Fibroid be gone. Lumps go in the name of Jesus. Lord, be healed. Be healed. I command you to dissolve right now. Every growth, every swelling in any part of your body, I command, I decree, let it dissolve right now in the name of Jesus. Check yourselves. Check yourselves. Check yourselves. I like you to check yourself. Check the lump. Check the cancer. Check whatever it is. Do it right now. Do it right now. And celebrate the miracle you're receiving. Do it right now. Thank you, Jesus. Saka pariyakatai. Parando sopreketi. Hear me. There are many of you that have been oppressed by Satan, whether in your dream. There are not all of you. Are you listening to me? But there are a few people you may not even know. The power of God will fall on you. Inside, outside. Hear me, get set. As the power of God falls on them. Let me have them right here. Hallelujah. So take up in the name of Jesus, every devil, everyone, I like you to lift your hands. Let the fire fall on you right now. Inside, outside, inside, outside. Be free. Every satanic manipulation ushers locate them inside, outside. Inside and outside, by the power of the Holy Ghost, Zokoto Pereketa, Rote Shaya, Manto Priakata, Regete de 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 go, 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 inside, outside, be free, right now, Soto Pariaka, Barekete, Rekotosia, Rekerete Bai, Rondo Sotoba, Reketete Bakata, Roko Shataya, inside and outside, inside and outside, Poreke Shaba, Parekete Bakata, Rekoto Sobre, Parekete Bakata, inside and outside, inside and outside, every devil, every demon, let them go, let them go. Let them go. 
let them go. No devil can hold you. No devil can hold you. No devil can hold you. Every demon, every devil, every demon, you will not stand this meeting. Inside, outside, the fire of the Holy Ghost, the fire of the Holy Ghost. There are still two people left, one outside and one inside. Right now, every devil that doesn't want to let you go, I command, be free. One outside, one inside, one outside, one inside. Now, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Now, by the power of the Holy Ghost, be set free, be loosed, be loosed. One outside, one inside, be loosed in the name of the Lord Jesus. You came to be free. Hallelujah. Have the ushers located them? One outside and one inside. One outside, one inside. Acute levels of demonic oppression. All of you at the overflow, I want you to lift your hands. All of you outside, just lift your hands. Holy Ghost, draw that one person. You will not escape. No devil will cover it. In the name of Jesus, the fire of God upon that one person now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm waiting for the person outside. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Shanda bako pariye kata. Re kata baliye kata baria. Hallelujah. Listen. Bible says for this purpose was the son of man made manifest that he may destroy the works of the devil. Hallelujah. Satan is not as powerful as he has been magnified to be. And brothers and sisters, it doesn't matter whatever challenge. I'm going to speak to all of you in front right now. And the fire of God will sweep across you from my right down to my left the fire will literally burn you holy spirit now let it move across my right down to my left every fire burn off that chaff let her go let her go be free now from every demonic oppression be free now from every demonic oppression. Every demon, go, leave her. Every demon, come out of her now. Come out of her now. Come out of her now. Come out of her. Come out of her. Come out of her. You are free. I call you free by the power of the Holy Ghost. This 
ladies under acute oppression. Let that devil leave you, gentlemen. Right now, I command every creep of Satan, you are a spirit. I've seen you in the realm of the spirit. Let him go. Now, let him go. Look at what is happening to him. Look at, look at what is happening to him. Watch the spirit manifest through him. Watch the spirit manifest through him. Watch the spirit manifest through him. Leave him. Let him go. Let him go. Now let her go. Let her go. Let her go. Every devil, let her go by the power of the Holy Ghost. You are free. You are free. You are free. I must go. Listen, listen, listen. Hold on. No, we are going to go. <laughs> Hear the spirit talking back. Now, devil, go. Go. By the power of the Holy Ghost, you have been defeated. You have been defeated. Oh, celebrate Jesus. <laughs> Sir, your oppression comes to an end. Believe in the Lord and you shall be established. He said, believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. Every demonic stronghold. Now, be free. Now, be free. Now, be free. Now, be free. You are free by the power of the Holy Ghost. of the spirit let this man go you have been suffering you don't even know it but you have done things that are not godly and given satan access to your life but tonight light shines in the darkness light shines light shines step down. Let me tell you something. You love God, but there are windows that are open. I see different accesses, but the power of God will come upon you in a strong way. And every devil working against your destiny will give way. Are you listening to me? But hear me. You've opened up yourself for many things. You have opened up yourself for many things. You've got to culture the things that you receive and the revelations that you embrace. Hallelujah. Hold my hands. Just hold my hands. Don't torture. Don't torture. Be free. Be free. Soto Rokosia. Rekete Baria. Rapoto Sope. Rekete. Rekete Nabosh. Makora Safa, Parata Variegete, Rekete Tete Bakai, Paradobo Soresta, Anta Variegata. Hallelujah. Who is John? John, you are a gentleman, your name is John. John, do we have any John here inside and outside? John, come up quickly. John, I'm hearing John in my spirit. Hurry up, why are you standing outside? John, where is your mother? Who was? Hallelujah. Where's your mother? What is what does she do? She sells provision and all that. She sells provision. Is she fine? Is all going well with her business? 
What is wrong? It's going down. It's going down. Yeah. You know why? No. Is she a Christian? Yeah. She's serious with God. No. She's not no. serious with God. She has put her hands in ungodly things. And the devil is perfecting her seriously. And the plan is to affect you too. Do you know me? No. Hallelujah. Have I discussed this with you? No. God has brought you here to set you free. Amen. Are you going to stand for your mother? No. There's nothing that is in the darkness. That God is saying. Hold my hands. He's going to minister to you. He'll pray for you. Whatever he sees, he'll minister and pray for you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, before we continue, I sense an interruption in the realm of the spirit. Someone or two people, the spirit of prophecy will come upon you. Ushers, take note. When that happens, two of them, you will be under the power of God and you will come out. There is a word that the Lord wants to speak to the people right now. Are you listening to me? Are you ready? Spirit of God, as you have shown me, now, let there be that manifestation. Shotokotoba. Now, 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 Kotorekete. Please bring them out. Bring them out. Bring them out. The spirit of prophecy. One more person. Parakatabalia. That's all. We have two of them already. Korekete. The spirit of prophecy. Hallelujah. You're going to bring words from the throne. Amazing words from the spirit. Oh my God, listen, the power of God is ready to break loose. I can't even stop it. Now, I can't stop it. Everywhere, 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 everywhere. Now, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Now, I can't even stop it. I can't stop it. God shot over The breaking of the spirit. Now, inside, outside, in the overflow. Now, now. Receive it outside. Receive it outside. Ushers, help them. Ushers, help them. Ushers, help them. My God. My God. My God. No control of us. Bring them outside. Bring them out. All of you lift your hands inside and outside. I'd like you to shout Jesus. Shout Jesus. Shout Jesus! Shout Jesus! Shout Jesus! He's still falling. He's still falling. At the back. At the back. At the back. Those of you at the back. At the back. At the back. Now. At the back. 
from the Lord. This lady is one of them. Bring her, Janfa. Bring her. Just bring her. Hold her. the exact same one that is doing a new thing. Hallelujah. What's happening? 
rain. All of you outside, come, even if it's to stand. Come in, if you can sit at the altar, just come in and find somewhere and sit. Hallelujah. Praise God. Just find, stand at the eye, come in front here. You can sit across. This is not some church thing. Come, draw them. You can sit, sit around. There's no reason why you should be standing outside. If there's no rain, fine. But if there's rain, come, stand, sit. Find anywhere on the floor, just come and sit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, please. Listen. Those who are experiencing any deafness, if there's any deaf person here, partial deafness or total deafness, lay your hands on your ears. If you brought anyone deaf, instruct the person to lay his or her hands. Go ahead and do that quickly. Listen, not, not everybody can get to go to the back. Some can just organize them around. Please. Some can stand here. You can sit. Just find somewhere. If you, there, these steps can be seats. Feel free. Don't feel embarrassed. Just find somewhere and sit around. Sit anywhere. Right here, you can sit close to me. It's good to be organized, but when occasion demands for it, let the people come in. Let some sit. Feel free, sweetheart. Sit down. Right? That's right. Find somewhere and sit. You want to come and sit on the stage? You are free. You are permitted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Right now, what I see in the realm of the Spirit is the reign of the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Baptism in the Holy Ghost. Baptism in the Holy Ghost. With evidence of speaking in tongues. Everybody, please lift your hands. If you are here and you are not filled with the Holy Ghost, for many of you, God will give you new utterance. New utterance. The moment I shout receive, you're not filled with the Holy Ghost. Go ahead, release yourself. The power of God will come upon you and you begin to pray in tongues. The moment I shout receive, for the next five minutes, I want everybody in and outside this auditorium to begin to pray in tongues. For many of you, God will give you new tongues. Are you ready now? Are you ready now? Are you ready now? Receive in the name of Jesus. Receive it now. Receive it now. Baptism in the Holy Ghost. Go ahead and begin to pray in tongues. Even if you've never prayed, receive it. Baptism in the Holy Ghost. Baptism in the Holy Ghost. Baptism in the Holy Ghost. From my left to my right to the center, inside, outside. Baptism. Evidence of praying in tongues. New tongues. Glorious tongues. Glorious tongues, worshippers, hold yourself. Just hold your hands. All the worshippers come on stage. All the worshippers come on stage. All the worshippers, every one of you, come in and hold yourself. All the worshippers, come and hold yourself. Hold yourself. Hold yourself. Hold yourself. Get ready now. Fire on you. 
right now. From you, let it flow to every one of you. Flow now to every one of you. Flow now to every one of you. In the name of Jesus, receive it now. Now, 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 now. to minister miracles in mass I want to give Jamfa opportunity there are few of you that God will have specific words for and when he's done my brother Jimmy will come and give a few words and then we're going to pray don't miss out on any part of this hallelujah I see certain people I saw like incense come over certain people and the Lord told me that these are demons that come to torment the minds of people, the minds of people. I see certain people that are under that stronghold of demonic influence. And God says he wants to touch them now, wherever they are. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we declare that let such stronghold over the minds of people be broken. We declare healing right now. We declare that the mind of people be released. We declare that that demons that keep people's minds bound, that help people bondage, be free right now. Be free right now. In the name of Jesus, I see somebody who came into this meeting. You came with an intense pain around your neck. This side I'm touching, wherever you are, just come quickly, 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 quickly. This part of your neck, you came in with intense pain. You came in with intense pain, this part of your neck. Where are you? Where are you, just in a minute? Lord, I declare wherever that person is right now, I command healing, I command that pain. Go right now, declare your neck to be healed. I declare your neck to be healed in the name of Jesus. Where is BC? Where is BC? BC? Where is BC? Just quickly, please. Where is BC? The Lord says, As they come, ushers, follow them, please. The Lord Let says, the ushers follow them so they don't have to. This angel of war is arising for your family tonight. God says, go tell your sister that that affliction over her home is broken. God says, go tell her that the enemy that stole her children, the Lord brings deliverance tonight. In the name of Jesus. Go tell her that the Lord is bringing breakthrough. That affliction is broken. That spirit is broken. Freedom comes to her and your household. In the name of Jesus. My brother, Yaknan, the Lord wants me to minister to you. I don't know, where is your mom right now? She's in Joss. I saw in the spirit, I saw certain attacks, certain scorching tongues of men that are risen up against her in the place where she walks. And God says, 
there have been an intense warfare over her life and even concerning her health. Am I right? Even concerning her health, I've seen warfare over her life. God says right now, he's stretching forth his hand to bring deliverance to her. God says he's silent the tongues of men. He's silent the tongues of men that have risen against her. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I say a black car just drive into your house. I say a black car just drive into your house. I don't know if your family just got a black car now, but I see a black car just... a black car just driving to your house and the Lord says he's bringing that to your family. In the name of Jesus, I see the Lord extend a letter to you. God says he's opening a door for you. God says you shall be called for a door is open for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Lord, I thank you. Thank you because there's an open door and a letter is coming for him and it shall be for good. I see a letter being put in your hand. I see them calling you in the name of Jesus. Where, where is that? The Lord wants me to speak. Where is this woman, this barrister? God says, I should tell your family. God says, even as you leave, as you leave Zaria, he said, I said, I put it in your heart to do. God says, you will find yourself. God says, you will find yourself established in a young, growing ministry. And God says, his hand is going to come upon your lives in a new way like you have never seen. I won't see your wife. God says, the spirit of God will come upon her and she'll begin to stir up women to pray. And God says by that he will bring deliverance to many homes. God says by that he will bring deliverance to men in the neighborhood. But God says doors of opportunity are open. Even in business, God says walk into these doors. God says walk into these doors. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we give you praise. Is there anybody in this place if you came here with HIV, don't be ashamed, just come. If you came here with HIV, God says he wants to heal that, just come. If you came here with HIV, God wants to give you a miracle. Father, we thank you. Because God says he wants to heal that. Or for whoever you are standing for that has that, we declare in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We declare deliverance right now. We declare supernatural healings right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where is it, Jimmy? Uh, Jimmy? Uh, Jimmy? Hallelujah. Hello. Bring the lady. Just bring her. Just leave her. Leave her. Shalom. Peace. All right, li listen, please. There are a few people here throughout this service you'll be feeling listen a literal cloak like a skin you literally from the crown of your head especially around your shoulders literally literally i hear god say a new spirit and a new man a new spirit and a new man those people lift up your hands you will feel a weight of god's glory from the crown of your head down to the sole of your feet god says it is for a separation unto intimacy a separation unto intimacy secondly god says it is a mantle of an anointing, a place of intercession and prayer. And the last thing I hear God say, God is separating you, an exodus, an exodus. I see those people, one of them is a tall man, a young man, you are very tall, you are very tall. I hear God say, prepare for war, 
Prepare for war. Prepare for war. Prepare for war. He will teach your hands to war. Prepare for war. Let that gentleman raise up his hands and let God confirm his word with signs and with waters. There are certain ladies here, the mistakes of the past. Sexual immorality has cost you many things. For some of you, it's the loss of your wombs. For some of you, it's venereal diseases. God says he has seen the cry of your heart and he's given you a new womb. Divine replacement, divine replacement. He says he has forgiven you and he's restoring divine replacement. And upon some of you, I have seen that the same mantle for an apostolic move is coming upon you. But God says you will move by the four winds of his spirit. The four winds of his spirit. The four winds of his spirit. He says that you will not find counsel in everyday things, but you will find counsel in the place of prayer. He says that the blood will speak for you and fire will mount to you. He says he will create a new world by his words. A new world by his words. Lord, confirm your word with signs and with wonders. And there are two men in this place. There are two men in this place. Two men in this place. Elderly men. And this has been your prayer for since the beginning of this year. You said, Lord, I've made a mistake with my life and my destiny. But please, don't let that mistake affect my children. You have children, elderly men, elderly men. You have regrets. Your life is full of regrets. God says, I should tell you, groom your children in the fear of the Lord. And the things you were supposed to do, even greater they will do. If those people are here, please come. The elderly man. You have children. An elderly man. An elderly man. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Very quickly. Listen. By the Spirit, this is going to be the last phase of the release of miracles. I'm going to be releasing prophetically. Hear me. The moment I mention your case, the power of God is reaching you to set you free. And even if I don't mention your case and I speak, under the unction of the Holy Spirit, you will be made whole. Now is the time. If you brought anybody who, who is sick, now is the time to lay your hands on them. Are you listening? If you came with any sick person, I'm going to be praying for a release in your mind. Those of you who are students, God will shock you. See, God will do something in you tonight that will surprise you. Hallelujah. I hear my spirit sexually transmitted diseases. Be healed now in the name of Jesus. The mistakes, the consequences of the past will not follow you. I set you free in the name of Jesus. Peptic ulcer, migraine, be healed in the name of Jesus. Blindness, complete or partial, be healed in the name of Jesus. Every kind of psychosomatism, anybody here with any mental condition, now, Kosata Bariakata, Lekerebo Shotobakata, be healed in the name of Jesus. Let every devil of insanity leave you now. Every devil of insanity, go, 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 go Amen. by the power of the Holy Ghost. Every blood disease, SS, HIV, every blood disease, if your, if your genotype is SS in this place, we change it now in the name of Jesus. Anyone who is a sickler here, any sickler, I don't care what the doctors have told you, any sickler, be free forever in the name of Jesus. Every hand of death, 
over your life. Many of you have had dreams. Death, death, every hand of death over your life. Right now, by the unction of the Spirit, for you and your families, be free in the name of Jesus. Every curse of poverty over your life, over your family. Enough is enough. And tonight, I decree, be free in the name of Jesus. 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 Where's the lady I called out? Come. Look at me. The Lord says, I will show you mercy. That's what the Lord says I should tell you. That I will show you mercy. Are you listening to me? I don't know what this means to you. But the Lord says I should tell you I will show you mercy. And tonight you find mercy. The mercy of the Lord upon your life. I hear my spirit, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old, for the Lord does a new thing in your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus. If you are a student, lift up your hands. Enough is enough. Listen, don't chop it what is going to happen now. If you are a student, I don't care, listen, hear me. I don't care what your CGPA is. Under the unction of the spirit, Listen, Reke Tabaria. If I be a servant of God in the name of Jesus, I command from glory to glory, receive it. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Hear me. Listen. Listen. Hallelujah. Now hear me. There are some of you. It's like over half of you will feel like something rests on your head. It's a baptism of intelligence. Receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. Baroko Tosoto. Receive it now. Receive it. A baptism. Baptism of intelligence receive it enough is enough enough is enough enough is enough, is enough. over your tears in your academic hallelujah and for all of you who have been unjustly treated in your department you are suffering as a result of the wickedness of people hear me right now under this unction be free in the name of Jesus I don't care how long your paper has been missing I command it to be found now in the name of Jesus There are some of you who are supposed to graduate, but humanly speaking, you know there's no way except God brings a miracle. Thank God you are in a miracle service. Shake faculties, oh God. Shake departments, change policies. I release you. We graduate to here. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. From the text I sent to some of you, right now, you're going to receive a baptism of wisdom. The Bible says many of you have made foolish decisions. 
And hear me, friends, without wisdom, you cannot move forward in life. Are you ready for the wisdom of God? You're going to shout, I receive. And when you say, I receive, for some of you, you feel fire passing through your spine. I don't know why God is saying spine. Shout, I receive. Shout, I receive. Shout, I receive. Baptism of wisdom. Baptism of wisdom. Baptism of wisdom. Wisdom beyond your age. Supernatural wisdom. From the throne. From above. Wisdom that will make you the head and not the tail. Wisdom that will set you above. Wisdom. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you came here with your prayer requests? Prayer requests. Ushers. Okay, please let's have all the prayer requests here. If you've not written your prayer request, please do it quickly. We want to agree. I don't care what it is. If it finds its way to God's altar, you'll be free from it. For yourself, for your loved ones, do this quickly. Please, let's do it quickly. that is going on hear me if there are children in this place from age 10 below bring all of them to the front they are going to receive an impartation right now if there are any children in this place from age like 10 below bring all of them right here where are the prayer requests please Please make sure you stand in for your loved ones, all the children, this way, from age 10 below. Ushers guide the children. Don't miss out on this golden opportunity. Your prayer request. Before the Lord of Sabaoth. Just turn it, let's have all the prayer requests. Make it fast, make it snappy. Let's have all the children. These children will be anointed by the power of the Holy Ghost. And they will do great and mighty things. The children will never give any parent here trouble. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Let him 
name alone be glorified. Let's have all the prayer requests, please. Sing, Lord, I pretend. We are waiting for you. It's not too late. You can quickly write and read it. Quickly, 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 let's have the requests. Ushers, is this all? Media department, the prayer requests from the internet. I hope we have them here. The ones on Facebook and Twitter. fast about this. Now, hear me. All of these requests represent for some of us impossible situations. And as the servants of God, we are going to pray and speak over this request. And hear me, while this is happening, I'd like you to be receiving in your spirit for yourself and for your loved ones. I'd like to invite every minister of the gospel here I'd like you to come on stage. Every minister of the gospel, let's do it quickly, quickly. We're a servant of God in this place. Hallelujah. Now, we're going to go down on our knees and pray on this request. And as we do that, I'd like the worshipers to continue. I'd like you to receive whatever request it is that found its way to this place under the unction of God. I don't care what it is. By the Spirit, I want to tell you that situation is over. Hallelujah. Servants of God, let's go ahead and go down. And Sing, Lord, I receive. <laughs> Pastor Williams to just round up this prayer. Can we hold our hands together, servants of God? Jesus. Shabako. Jesus. 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 
Jesus. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus. It's done. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Now, listen to me. Hear me. The greatest miracle in this place tonight is not the bodily healings or the spiritual things that God is doing. There are many of us today that will begin a new and a fresh journey with the Lord. Hallelujah. There are many of us that have been running away. God has been calling you to be born again, calling you to the experience of a new life. But there are many of us that have let Satan have his way over our lives. I'd like to tell you that tonight there is hope. Hallelujah. And the Lord is calling you. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you have done. The greatest miracle to happen in this place is the miracle of salvation. And hear me, if you've never been born again, you've never given your life to God, quit running away from Him. All of these miracles are a sign to prove to you that He is love and that you, you can trust Him with your life. Hallelujah. You've never given your heart to the Lord or you've given your heart to the Lord and you've derailed. The moment I count three, all over this building, I'd like you to leave your seat and run out here. We are a family. Now is not the time to think about it. Hallelujah. One, two, three. Leave your seat quickly. Leave your seat and run out. Run, don't walk. Run out and come and make Jesus Lord of your life. All of you, from inside, outside, leave your seat. Jesus is calling you. Leave your seat. Jesus welcomes you. Keep clapping and appreciate them. It's over. It's over. It's over. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Keep clapping. They are coming. We will wait for you. Run to Jesus. Run to Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, appreciate them. Run to Jesus. Don't stay back. The Lord is calling you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If there are still a few people who are waiting for you, as the Holy Ghost tells you, come out, leave your seat and come. Hallelujah. Leave your seat and come. You are welcome. It doesn't matter what you have done. The Lord is willing to forgive you. And this miracle service was put for you. That there be a translation from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of God's gifts. Hallelujah. Now look at me. Those of you standing here, listen to me. I need you to understand that no one condemns you. Are you listening to me? The ministry of condemnation does not come from the Lord. It doesn't matter what you have done. Are you listening to me? It doesn't matter what you have done. Tonight can be a fresh night for you. And with love we receive you to this great family of faith. It's my honor to lead you to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. This is the greatest miracle. This is why all of this was put for you. Beyond the healings, we celebrate your salvation. All of you who are standing, in one minute, I'd like you to talk to Jesus by yourself. 
Go ahead and talk to Jesus. Say, Jesus, I'm sorry. And I now mean business with you. Make sure you talk to him. He loves you. Don't let anyone condemn you. Talk to Jesus. Talk to Jesus. Talk to Jesus. Hallelujah. Look at me. Now, I'd like to pray with you. Say after me, dear Lord Jesus, as loud as you can, you're not reciting this. You're confessing it with faith in your heart. Say after me, dear Lord Jesus, I accept that I'm a sinner, unable to help myself, but I believe that you died for me. You shed your blood for me. And you rose again for me. And today, I accept your love. I accept your sacrifice. I declare that I'm born again. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I denounce sin. I denounce Satan. I declare, according to God's word, that I am heaven bound. I'm a new creation. Heaven is rejoicing over my salvation. No more going back. In the name of Jesus, let's appreciate them the greatest, the greatest decision. The greatest decision. Hallelujah. Now, I want to congratulate every one of you some of you are crying i need you to know that god loves you and this is the beginning of a brand new day hallelujah now in one minute i just like you to follow the ushers they'll have your details and will make arrangements to follow you up adequately just move towards this direction appreciate them give jesus praise hallelujah hallelujah now for the sake of time We'll take only three testimonies. Three testimonies of what God has done in this place. I know there are many, but let's take, okay, come quickly. Who else? Three testimonies, very quickly in this place. Hallelujah. Come, and then let's have two more, and we'll take the testimonies. One, the last person, very quickly. Very quickly. Okay, hallelujah. All right, please be seated for a while. We'll soon be out of here. Hallelujah. All right, please. I want to thank God. Please listen, listen. I want to thank God for myself and my friend. She actually left with those people that just left now. When we are about to come for this, I, I, she told me that a friend invited her. So I was like, you of all people <laughs> inviting me to church. She was like, they just go. Because if I tell her, let's go to church, like, I should not disturb her. She doesn't want to go. So she was like, just go. So we came here. She was like, she's not even feeling herself. Because she used to have this migraine. She fell from the bridge some time ago. So she used to have this terrible migraine, mental disorder. She, has, she can't remember anything at all. So she just came out here right now. She's telling me that she's feeling, she's feeling like a new person right now. And I'm so happy that we came here to the glory of God. is so in our life and I want to thank God. God is faithful. Thank God for everything. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to thank God for healing me. I, I've had this ulcer from secondary school. I've been prayed for several times but whenever I go back it will be okay again. But just now as I was standing after I've been prayed for, it came back again. I said feeling the pain and I said no. Today there is no going back. I'm not accepting you. And immediately it disappeared. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All are healed. Praise the Lord. I want to appreciate God for the word that came our way this evening. The word we are exact and tell on me. I got a call this afternoon before I came for this meeting from the person I intend to do business with. 
my wife does not even know about the call apart from those who were with me when I got that call nobody else knows about that call and in this meeting God mentioned that call and the business I want to confirm that the words of prophecy that came here they are not guesswork they are precise praise be the name hallelujah Lord we give you praise I'm seeing a vision of a particular woman, not less than 50 years of age, a fair woman. She had eye challenge and suddenly is, is becoming blindness. God is showing me somebody's mother here. Your mom is fair. Your mom is not less than 50 years of age. She has an eye disease that has suddenly become blindness. Where are you? Just lift up your hands. God is showing God wants to bring perfection to your mom. Where are you? Come, let's pray for your mom. We'll cast blindness away from your mom. We'll cast blindness away from your mom. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we we'll command that our eyes be opened supernaturally in the name of Jesus. Go tell your mom that the Lord Jesus Christ makes her whole. Amen. Blind to God, we declare in the name of Jesus that your mom is free. We command that her eyes is healed and open. Go tell your mother that Jesus makes her whole. Amen. Hallelujah. You can register your testimonies with the media department. Hallelujah.